This video has been two years in the making, but finally, here we are. Today, we are going to be taking a step back in time to look at a true camera classic, the Kodak DCS Pro 14N. Before we get started, here's a little montage of me using this camera accompanied by examples. Enjoy. Uh, we're totally doing this review in my office. I'm not on my couch watching Seinfeld. Even if I were, the sound may or may not be muted, so we can't prove it. Now, depending on who you ask, this is the world's second full-frame DSLR ever produced, and it came out at an eye-watering $3,700 price tag, which is still a staggering amount even to today's standards. The tech in this is amazing, from the goods to the bads, its crude ergonomics and short overall lifespan, to the images it's able to produce. It's funny because Kodak toted this to be a very intuitive and easy camera for any photographer to pick up, but it's anything but. Let's start with the ergonomics here. The body is very off-putting. It's shaped like a flagship DSLR that you'd see on the market today, but if it were made out of ice cream, then put in the microwave and refrozen. It has a slouch with a very fat vertical grip, which might lead you to believe that it has a very beefy battery, but nah, that's not the case at all. We'll get to that later. Speaking of the grip, it's chunky with a muffin top. So chunky, in fact, that it might prevent you from mounting certain lenses, especially ones with collars to it, like this Tamron wildlife lens I have. I've run into this a few times on the field. It's nothing that you can't work around, and at least the paunch here is fat and stable enough where you can mount your tripod base plate to it. But let me just say, if you're not using it for wildlife and you want to opt for more candid or street work, this by no means is a light camera. It's coming in at two and a quarter pounds without a lens. Although I do appreciate all of the dedicated buttons these old DSLRs have, the button layout on this old Kodak is very asymmetrical. The dials are all on the right, whereas the buttons are on the left. So one-handing this might not be an option. That's if you have Schwarzenegger arms anyways, and you can man around a two and a half pound camera. But let's just say you won't be street shooting with this beluga whale of a body anyways. But even if you are body positive, the Kodak has a lot of glaring performance issues to overcome. Look, I know I've said this a lot on this channel, but I mean it now. This is the slowest camera that I have ever used. 
even in its prime, the speed was a massive issue for photographers back in 2002. So imagine that. In the time of dial-up, this camera was slow. It takes a staggering 20 seconds to turn this camera on for it to think, warm up, and boot up. And I have two versions of this. I have the standard N and the NX. They're both essentially the same thing. The N being the normal, the NX being the upgradable version with better write time and allegedly better power management. I don't really think so, but we'll go on. But back in the day, the NX could be upgraded for $1,800 to add that faster buffer and a new matrix. So this essentially means you're taking the Sigma SD9 body, stitching on the Nikon F mount, slapping a Kodak sticker on it along with its color philosophy. So you have a nice little Frankenstein camera. It's pretty neat to me to see all these Anchor Brands collab like that back in the day. But on the topic of starting up, my 14N original boots up much like an old analog television where I have to see static for 20 minutes while it thinks and warms up. I don't know if it's safe to be around when it's doing that. Probably got some kind of weird 2003 cancer, but it's okay. It's for the channel. <laughs> You're going to have to plan accordingly when shooting this camera in the field. Normally I'd opt to leave the camera on standby, but the battery life is incredibly short, especially here in Minnesota when it gets cold, even at 39 degrees moonwalker units, this camera was dying. So I had to keep a few batteries in my pocket and just cycle them out much like you would an old school DSLR. They kind of look a lot like magazines you would put in a fire stick so don't pull them out fast in public and make sure you have this guy on you that way people know you're shooting a first amendment item not a second amendment if you're catching my drift in in the united states not only is the battery life on this camera short but its overall lifespan is as well with its shutter only lasting about 30,000 accutations. So finding one of these in working condition is gonna get pretty hard if it's not already on today's market. Now, I got lucky, I found both of these for about $30 each, but the price varies so much because it's just a weird camera. So sometimes you can see them for sub 50 bucks, other times they're over 600, but usually I'm seeing the 14N run on eBay for about 250 give or take USD. So performance, this camera is essentially scared of the dark. You can't really shoot over ISO 400 without seeing any weird artifacts or noise. But one thing to me that shines about this camera is the mount system. Kodak really went soul searching for a while when they were trying to find their mount companion. They went from Canon and the EF mount to the Nikon F system. And Nikon has a great heritage of lenses. I like to use my 50 millimeter F1.4 D or my third party quirky lenses, like my wide angles, my Tamarons and whatever fun manual ones I've picked up along the way as a camera hoarder. So in overall summary of the performance, it's slow and it dies easily for the nihilist out there. But if you want to look at it from the sunny side of things, you can capture some real Kodak moments with grandpa's rig here. If you master the camera, you could definitely get some sharp images with the 14N because it lacks an anti-aliasing filter. And try finding another 14 megapixel full frame camera without one might be pretty tough. This camera was supposed to replace film photography. It has some pretty big shoes to fill, or it had some, and I'm not going to pretend that it does so or I'm preaching the objective truth. But this produces some very unique images, and they're very filmic. And it doesn't even hold a candle to modern cameras in terms of color addition, dynamic range, or low light performance. No. But who cares? This camera has flair and character. The colors coming straight from Kodak with no grading or post-processing are simply nostalgic to me. The reds and the blues are punchy, but it can also produce some very mellow compositions too. For me, this produces the Kodak color palette without having to worry about developing or post-producing a whole lot. In trade, shooting with this is like developing, dodging, burning, enlarging, cropping post-producing all in the field <laughs> with how long it takes to produce one image. 
using this camera. But the Kodak DCS Pro 14N here simply can't be compared to a film camera, nor can it to a modern DSLR. To me, this was a pioneer and a powerhouse of a camera that just acts as a milestone in the history of photography that we shouldn't overlook. And using it today, you shouldn't expect it to be consistent and easy camera to use. It's like a muzzle loader of a camera. It takes time to master and a respect for the art of shooting. It's definitely not a pot shot and kind of camera, but I feel it's liberating to get out with a body like this from time to time. Shooting with the DCS Pro 14N forces me to take a step back and really take in a composition before I make my shot. By working within the limitations of this camera, I feel that it allows me to be a bit more creative. I'd like to think that it helps me with my photography by exercising my imagination. This is a fun camera to use, and it's definitely not the last time you're gonna see it on this channel, especially now that I've got the basics mastered. Well, if the basics were like riding a bull in a rodeo, so not really, but it's definitely one that we're gonna see again. So thank you for watching, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this camera classics and I will see you next time. Bye friend. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to Matt's Notes on Instagram. See ya.